he asks you because I don't know. I never know what I'm going to talk to. Um, but I did have this book in mind, so I thought I'd talk to you about it. There's a little booklet in our catalog. In fact, there's two by the same author, and we now own the rights to it. Um, it's called Coughs, Coals, Croakers, and Canker. Croakers is sort of a, an English term because this book came from England originally, but Foy's is the, uh, now the uh, uh, printer of it. But it's all about respiratory infections, respiratory problems. Um, and as I've shared with you before over the years, that respiratory is the most common and maybe most misunderstood of health issues in pigeons because um, with respiratory, uh, some of the signs you may think of as respiratory, but not necessarily. Uh, an example is a lot of people uh, will talk to me about a problem with the word, the way it's breathed, the pigeon's breathing, breathing, or it's coughing, or it's a fluffed up. And it, it, that isn't always necessarily respiratory. It, it could be canker. I was reading, in fact, we're going to be talking about canker on the upcoming show. And uh, uh, in talking about can canker, trichomonosis, uh, some of the symptoms for trichomonosis are exactly like some of the respiratory issues. That's why it's, people call me on, on a regular basis. Never a day goes by where I don't get calls uh, about health issues. And the one we talk about the most is respiratory, uh, which reminds me, um, I give out, I don't think any other companies will do this, but I give you my home phone number. If you need me and you've got a health issue, you may want to get a pencil. It's just as easy to call me direct because if you call the girls here at Foy's or you can't say girls anymore, I'm retired. Uh, but Dan Dan the Pigeon Man has joined us, a young man who joined us last year, doing a great job. So now it's all women and one guy like it was originally when I, when I was not retired. Um, so I uh, kind of lost my train of thought there, which I think you're all getting used to. But it's a great book. It's in Foy's catalog. There's two of them. They're inexpensive. I don't know whether you can see it or not, but there's a lot of different um, colored pictures in here which talk about the respiratory problems. Here's one that I've talked about very, very, very often. It says, the picture says, the bird on the left shows a cold, C-O-L-D, canker lesion. The bird on the right died. The softer, paler appearance of the canker in the gullet is obvious. Birds with this form look ill. So it talks about a lot of different things. One of them is the symptoms that you might see in respiratory, but are in fact or something else uh, similar to canker. Um, we're going to be talking about canker uh, for the hour. Uh, if you have questions uh, and you're sort of an early bird, we don't officially go on the air in about five or six more minutes. Just keep in mind um, that you can always send us a question through Facebook and we'll answer it right on the air. Uh, with this uh, pandemic going on, um, it hasn't affected us uh, to speak of up until the last week. Um, and now we're starting to, to, to uh, have a problem uh, with our business. I suppose in some ways it's a good business because we've been busier, I think, than we probably have been in the last eight or 10 years. Uh, but the bad thing is that with the uh, the pandemic, a lot of the European countries, um, South African countries, thank you very much, you know, and different uh, countries in the world, we get products from Poland and we get product, products from Taiwan, uh, Belgium, Germany, England, and probably forgot one or two. Uh, some of those countries can't ship. Stuff is stuck in a port and we can't get it. And I guess what I'm trying to tell you is that we're running out of things. Um, and I don't want to, to, to uh, be too worried because in almost every case, if we're out of one product, we have a similar product from a different manufacturer and we might have it. Um, but, but please don't be surprised. Don't get upset with us. Um, and I, uh, I'm sure you won't. But there are going to be times when we have to say, I'm sorry, and it's going to get more regular. We're all out of that. 
Um, but if there's a, a substitute that we can suggest, ask, or we will share that information with you. Uh, Gina and I are gonna be talking about canker and here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Here's nine different products treating canker. We could say the same thing for respiratory. We have all, all kinds of products that treat respiratory issues, powders, pills, liquids. So we have a lot of different items uh, and you might have an old favorite, uh, but what's happening to FOIs is going to be happening to the other companies regularly too. They're going to run out of product. They just can't get them in from overseas. So you know, it has affected us. But we're warning you that we're, we're certainly running out of things. Not, not to wood products or the metal products or the drinkers or things like that, but uh, medications uh, in many cases are affecting us the most. Medicines and vitamins and supplements and things like that. So we have another five minutes and I don't know what to talk about. You want to take over, Veronica? No, you don't want to come over here and talk about pigeons. Gina, you want to come over here and talk? No, oh, you left me hanging. I was going to talk a little bit about this book. Most of you remember my good friend, um, Mjord Noggle, and Mjord was uh, called Dr. Pigeon. Uh, everybody called him. He was a great man. He was a... Uh, a genius in a lot of different areas, not just health of animals and birds, um, just anything that uh, you could come up with, he could almost always help you. Well, one day he sent me this. He says, here, he says, I thought you'd have fun with this little booklet. It's not about pigeons. It's basically about poultry. And, and he signed it. Uh, nice guy. You know what? I just noticed something. He signed it, Muir Noggle Jr., I didn't know he was a junior. Well, I learned something today. This was uh, printed in 1985, so it's been around for about uh, 15, 15 and 20, 35 years. And what it is, is it's poultry chicken trivia. And I'm sure most, a lot of you have had pigeons or chickens and have them now. Um, let me ask, I'll just ask you a funny one. Name the breed of poultry name of a breed of poultry, which was used to pull carts of products to the market. So what breed of poultry, what was big enough to actually haul products to the market? And of course, the, I, he got the answer in here and I just lost a lot. Oh, there it is. Lost my place. Um, I'll, how about this? I'm going to highlight this. And if you have the answer, give us a call and I'll give you attaboy. That means I'm, you're not getting anything except, hey, attaboy, attaboy. So that's question number 107. Um, and uh, if you're listening in, the show officially starts in a few minutes. But why does a chicken cross the road? But a lot of you think you know that one. I don't know. Knowing Lord, he's got a little different um, slant on it. I mean, I'm chuckling at his question. So if you have the answer, call it in. Why does a chicken cross the road? That's a, that number. That's a, no, I got uh, to do that. Oh, there it is. Number 125. Oh, I'll ask you another question. I'm pretty good at filling time, aren't I, Gina? You thought That's I was... not for sale, is it? No. Tell them. Huh? Oh, it's not a book that we have for sale. It's sort of a one-off one. It's the only one I have. You sent it to me. I have it. You have it? Well, you're special. Because you went and visited with uh, Yard and learned how to read stuff through a microscope. I right? did. Yeah, I remember that. Why does a... <laughs> why does a, a cock crow... Why does a cock crow, but a crow calls? Crow calls. Oh. Okay. Hi, Gina. Hi. Did you try my... Um, Let's not talk about it. Did you try my brownies? Let's not talk about it. Okay. Did you have one? I did. Because you weren't supposed to. Why wasn't I? Well, Is I understand. Special your, brownies. Well, no, but you've lost so much weight, so I can assume 
you don't have to worry about it anymore, right? You, before you were worried about your weight, so you wouldn't eat that sweet stuff. Really? And now that you've lost <laughs> so much it? weight. Really? Yeah. Oh, thanks. All right, it's all. I'll turn it over. So the to... camera makes me 20 pounds bigger, huh? Yeah, if television know, is out there. It always makes you look. A lot of people figure I probably weigh 170, 175. And... Probably. Okay, it's all yours. What's up? It's not three o'clock yet. I just came to say. Oh, I got Oh, I saw her. She put a question up there. Okay. Well, do you want me to? Oh, I think I, did I tell him that this is coughs and colds? I don't think And I right. have another one. What's the price on it? Oh, I did. Um, Can you um, what is it? Is? I have another one on. Coughs, colds, curves, and cankers, and. Canker? That's that one. Oh. I forget the other oh, one. Oh, there's another one by the same people. Uh, yeah. And I'll if you've watched the show for the very first time, don't let it bother you. We ain't no experts. And we just kind of wing it. There's, there's no, we, ain't, we ain't professional. Yes, we're not professional. And this is not a planned show. Um, we just kind of uh, invite you to send in questions. And we've already half, have some. And one of them, I know the show hasn't started, but well, you can you can mention what the the, book the other costs. book is problem droppings explained. Oh yeah, that's a great one too. Um, one of the things when people have sick birds, we Sorry. get a lot of questions, and all of us ask the same question: mm -hmm. What color are the droppings? Well, this other book is problem droppings explained. And it tells you if you have a certain color, what diseases, what the treatment might be. Um, and there's a lot of colored pictures in there. So that's a book that you may want to consider also. Um, how much longer do I have to do this all by myself? Huh? Oh, two, three, three more minutes. minutes. Three more minutes. Um, do we want to talk about the new catalog that's going to be ready no. over the next month? You can. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, the new catalog, as far as Veronica and Gina are concerned, is done. The 2000 and 2021, is that correct? Yes. 2021? Um, we're waiting to hear from the uh, printer. printer to see if they're going to be able to do it. Uh, so are we allowed to ask the people if they'd like a catalog to send in no. your name? No, mm -hmm. can't do that. Not if right you, now. No. When we make the announcement, and we'll certainly do it on this show. Uh, when the catalog is done, uh, we'll let oh. you know, and you can give us a call, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll send it to you. But I tell you what, it, it's going to be a nice catalog. Some stuff uh, that's put in there we've never put in there before. Mm -hmm. uh, some new products. Uh, and I must say, prices have not gone up dramatically sure there's, we have, we only print the catalog one like once every 18 months to two years so you know there are going to be price increases uh, one of the effect one of those price changes that affects us is the euro the euro is the european dollar um and it fluctuates uh, the day we print the catalog or the, when it's all done that's what our prices are based on when i first started to input product years ago the European euro was worth a dollar forty-five cents for every dollar of ours. So we were paying through the nose for that pro those products. It's dropped down. The euro, last time I checked, is below dollar ten, dollar seven, something like that. So um, we're getting a better buy, and we're trying to keep the prices uh, in line and not increase them any more than we absolutely have to. It's now two fifty nine. I'm getting hoarse. Would you talk for the next so thirty seconds? I brought seconds? you some um, water. Oh, thank you. We'll just start. We'll just start now. Let's okay. set the minute earlier, a couple of mm -hmm. seconds. So, welcome to Poise on Facebook. Um, hope everybody's doing well. Continues to be well and stay safe. Um, I beat Vicky last night. In Scrabble, and, and, I heard. Yeah, I've heard. I've shared this with you folks. We broke broke out um, puzzle the uh, Scrabble game, and it was Vicky's idea. Uh, but I, it, I want you to know it was a freaking setup uh, because I figured I'd kill her in Scrabble. Um, she beat. She probably beats me in in fifteen games. She'll beat me in twelve of them, and I couldn't figure out why. But I was talking to a friend, and he says, I'll bet you anything she's marked those numbers. 
because on the back of the <laughs> little uh, tile, it's blank. And I'll bet you anything, because the things you're looking for are the most are S's, like in Sam, and blanks, which you can do anything with. And S's always want points. So I really think she's got them. And I notice she puts her glasses on when she starts to play. It could be the glasses. She can see those marks with magic ink or something, or invisible ink. And uh, but last night I beat her. I'll tell you how the game went. We're <laughs> la we're at the end of the game, and I've got like three tiles left, and she's got two. So the score is she's one ahead. I put my towel up. I had two points. I went one ahead. She put her towel up, and she went one ahead. And then I had the three. My third one, I put it down, and I won the game by one point. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's, I'm not handicapped. That's all. I'm handicapped. She's experienced. <laughs> she always was good at Scrabble. Huh? She always was yeah, good at Scrabble. Well, she said she's played it all her life. Uh-huh. Yeah. So anyway. I start, excuse me, and I started a puzzle when this, all, this whole thing happened. The 750 pieces. I've been working diligently on it, and I've only... Probably only got 700 more pieces to find. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm working on that damn thing every day. And I, oh, wow. They're not my strength. That's, That's not for you, right? Oh, oh let's turn. Let's talk about pigeons. So, okay. so much for you not wanting to talk, huh? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so, welcome to Boys on Facebook. Today's show, we'll be, we'll be talking about canker. And um, one of, uh, we'll talk about the White Dove release, but there's one product that, um, Vicki and Fred asked us to demonstrate, and we're going to demonstrate that um, sometime during the show. Hi, Vicki. Hi, Fred. I talked to her today, I think. Good job. We needed to stay yesterday. Huh? Yeah, I hope so. So, thank you for joining in with us. <laughs> um, there's a couple comments and questions that I want to get to first. So, author asks, how much is the other book? Hand me that. I'm guessing this is the one you want, Arthur. This one is $16. Um, the other, the poultry one is not available. We only have a couple copies of that. Which one do you uh, The poultry. Oh, yeah, but yeah. the other one for uh, coughs and colds, or what's the other this one? This um, one, Problem Dropping to Explain. They're both $16, right? Uh, maybe. I don't know. First time they've interrupted you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Let's see. Um, okay, sorry. Hi, Scott. Um, Scott said he bought a Samantha's basket the other day, stained it, and polyurethaned it. Um, now I have a beautiful quality piece. I hate to use it. It looks so great. Why don't, we, why don't we ask Scott to send us in a picture? Maybe we can show it on a future show. Sure. Would you do that? Yeah, if you're listening, that's, Scott, send us in a picture. That's Scott from Bennett's Run Road. Oh, no, his name's Scott Bennett. Okay. You're from Bennett's he, Road. Yeah, he, he, uh, he's, he's called us on a regular basis, and we certainly do appreciate yes. all of the people supporting us. Yes, we do. Um, I forgot <laughs> I forgot to mention um, the auction at the beginning of the show, because, you know, he always interrupts me and messes me well, up. Interrupting me. Uh, Go ahead. Anyways, so the Holly, so both birds for the auction today, they both sold the Holly Croppers went to Robert Morrow, and then the Gabriels were sold to Regina Gann. Um, mm -hmm. If you have any questions about the Legacy Fund Trust, what it is, what it's for, um, any questions about donating, donating birds for us to auction off, you can always give Jerry a call mm -hmm. at home, 724-359-5355, or you can always call the store for Jerry or myself. Are you done with that right now? Go with ahead. I got a call, <laughs> got a call this morning from Fred Tolkey up in North Dakota, and mm -hmm. um, he is sending me a pair of parlor tumblers, which are completely different than parlor rollers, and they're considered a rare breed. So uh, over the next, maybe the next show, we're going to have a pair of parlor tumblers. Also got a call from Tom Pritchett, and Tom is sending me. And he's one of the top fantail breeders in the United States. He's sending me three pair of American fantails. So uh, stay tuned for future shows. We're going to have some really nice pigeons. Okay, we have a question from Angel. Hi, Angel. 
Jerry, is there anything that can be done to stop or slow a hen from keep laying in the off season? Well, I wonder if uh, those pregnancy pills for women would work. Do you think we could get one of those in quarters or something? Next. You don't think so? No. You want me to answer the question? Please. <laughs> <laughs> the answer, of course, is yes. Um, number one, the most common way to do it is to separate your birds. Uh, hens on one side, males on the uh, females on the other side, and if at all possible, a solid wall. What are you giggling about, Veronica? You said hens and females. Males and females, cocks and hens. That's why she was giggling. You know, you just don't know. She's over there making faces. Of it. And that's why sometimes I look over there because uh, one time she stuck her tongue out at us. But in answer to the question, one of them is to separate the hens and the cocks. Uh, and hopefully, or the best way is with a solid wall because so they can't see each other. The other way, of course, is to throw when they lay an egg in the winter time or at any time that you don't want to breed from them or uh, throw the egg away and put a wooden or plastic egg under the bird that won't stop them completely but the cycle from a day the egg, egg becomes fertilized which is the second egg that's when they start to set them eggs you're going to uh, hold them back from uh, laying again for at least three to four <laughs> weeks uh, so by putting false eggs under them, um, it slows down the process. And then if they lay again, um, do the whole thing all over again. It, it's a little bit stressful, but nowhere near as stressful as the hen, hen, hen laying eggs. Then the eggs hatch and they've got to feed them for the next four weeks. Well, if you use the false eggs, it'll solve the problem. Breathe. Hmm? Breathe. Breathe? Uh -huh. <laughs> well, oh, I was going to ask a question today on the show. Okay. Now, uh, what do you, um, you, I'll ask, you'll know the answer. I have a, a health issue. And I've had this health, health issue for maybe two decades. I bet you can't guess what it is. <laughs> um, it is not life-threatening. But I don't have cancer or nothing that's life threatening. It's not an injury or a broken bone or anything like that. But I have an illness that so I have to take pills uh, every day. What is my illness? Go ahead. You want me to answer it? No, I want oh, that to answer it. Okay, you already know say. the answer. Well, there was two things I was thinking. Then you said yeah, you one of them was that freak, freak accident I had, right? Remember that one when I was overseas? Huh. -uh. Oh, yeah. Um, that wasn't that what I was thinking. Oh, okay. Um, anyways, so. And I'm not infertile. <laughs> Go ahead. So back to canker. Did we Where start were talking we? about canker yet? Oh, okay. <laughs> Y'all just don't know. <laughs> you want to answer poor Vicky's question? Vicky. Nope, not diabetes, Alan. Um, Vicki, she didn't have ask a question. She made a statement. I'm spending our stimul stimulus money out boys. Thank you. We appreciate that. <laughs> We're gonna keep tabs, Vicky and Fred. <laughs> we know how much you got, and every order we're gonna deduct from the total, uh, so that when you get to the end of that total, we'll have a special gift for you. Gina, would you keep track of all of our orders from now on? Yep. Okay. It's not diabetes, not canker, not high blood pressure. Canker. <laughs> oh, take <Huh>. it off. <laughs> Russ, that, that, can we say that on the air? Go ahead. You oh, Jerry, you else. can't piss at your age. What the heck are you talking about? <laughs> God, my age. Hmm. Crohn's you know, disease. Last not time when we did a show, Gina, uh -huh. nobody noticed it. I had shaved my beard off. Oh. And not one person commented it. So the heck with you, I'm growing it back. I didn't know to see that. Yeah. Tells you how much I pay attention, huh? Where were we? Jerry said he called, he goes, he came in, he goes, I can't figure out what to wear today, so I didn't wear anything. 
I said, you don't wear anything? <laughs> Pushing 80. Um, you better start on some of that if you have another question. Uh, See, we can yeah. always put these kinds of things to the side if people keep asking us we questions. We can. Because that's the most important thing. People it is, but we still questions. need to talk about what we said we were oh, going to talk I, about. <laughs> I just saw what Vicky asked. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not it, Vicky. <laughs> oh, uh, go ahead. Uh, what you're going to start talking about? Well, canker. Wanted talk, we wanted to talk about canker. Some people call it. Well, the technical name, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, is is that it? yeah, is uh, uh, interrupted me again. We're going to be talking about canker. Trichomoniasis? Yep, trichomoniasis. One of the things that Maniasis. people may be shocked at, what percentage of pigeons, what percentage of all the pigeons in the world, what percentage of them have canker? 78%. You were looking, weren't you? I didn't. Is that right? <laughs> You may not know that I was doing a little bit of reading about it. 80% of all pigeons carry canker. Some may never show it. Their immune system may suppress it and it doesn't show at all. Or they're healthy and they're young, they've got canker. And of course, we all know young birds have the most to. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm looking up. Come on, Roberta. <laughs> if I had that, wouldn't I be dead? No. No, okay. <laughs> But um, nice most guy. most canker affects young birds. And one of the things that we've talked about before, and we've already mentioned respiratory a little bit, when you have a bird that has growth around the, the beak, and sometimes in the eye, and it looks like canker, and it's in, in the mouth, but it's usually in the roof of the mouth. Well, it's a disease. It's not canker. And the way you know is if you try to pull canker out, which is deeper in the throat, you're going to see some blood. If you try to pull a crusty element from the bird's mouth, top of the mouth usually, and it could be at the bottom of the beak, that's called sinusitis. And sinusitis is a respiratory problem. And uh, so many people think they assume because it's in the mouth, it's canker, but the test that sinusitis, use a Q-tip or your fingers or whatever uh, and pull it out, it'll come right out. But tomorrow it'll be there again. What it is, you know, sinusitis is a drainage of the nasal passages, just like when you have a cold or sniffles or what, or sometimes you just, uh, your nose is running. Uh, and that's what that is. I mean, the, the color comes from the fact that the, the sinuses are dripping and it dries up when it's exposed to the air and it turns brown. Uh, but getting back to canker, one of the most important things is, the, is what you, when you're using these drugs, I mentioned we have nine of them right here and we're going to talk about them. Uh, the most important thing is to rotate, rotate, rotate. Pigeons uh, get resistant to drugs over a fairly short period of time. Uh, and some of these drugs have been around for decades, 50, 60, 70 years, um, and the birds have developed resistance to it. So it's so important if you're going to treat. Now, the word is treat, not prevent, but I'm talking about treating, then you want to rotate the products. The other, one, other thing that a lot of people do is will treat the birds um, depending on their past experience, twice a year, sometimes four times a year if you've had a lot of problems with canker, uh, that's preventative. Uh, and you're going to, you, you can rotate those too, but you want to prevent it before it started. So it's not as important and doesn't have to be quite as strong. We had a couple of, are those going to come back up again, Veronica? The thoughts as to what I had, because I thought it was... Schizophrenia? Well, the one that was... I no I forget one was oh one was uh, uh, heart failure what do you call that congestive one? heart failure congestive heart failure nope um, and Fred thinks it's <laughs> how do you pronounce that pig pigmentia mentia I don't think I have that because I I can't <laughs> pronounce that one but there was another one um, oh now I forget I tore it down uh. so quick 
<laughs> yet it was one and I laughed at it. But anyways, if I have a sickness, an illness, head for decades, if you're just tuning in, uh, it's not life threatening. It's not an injury, um, but I've had it for years and years. And every morning I have to take a pill for it. Uh, and can you guess what my illness is? And I have it right this moment. I can feel it. Yeah. So, okay. In talking about cancer, it's something uh, you might be aware of. I've got calls about this before. When a person has can a pigeon has canker, on occasion, they're going to open up their mouth and stretch their neck out, almost like the, well, like a, how a penguin walks with its head up, sticking up like that. Well, <laughs> how? Uh, hmm? How? <laughs> like that. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, it's stretching their neck out. That could be canker also. There are other diseases that could be, and as I've told you so many times, it's so difficult to diagnose most diseases over the telephone. We do our very best, but there's probably no disease that a pigeon gets that could be something else other than what you may think it is. It's so apparent that it's canker, but no, it's not. It's sinusitis. It's so apparent that it's paratyphoid. No, it could be E. coli. It could be paratyphoid, but it also could be PMV. So there's almost every de disease mm -hmm. um, it has a, another disease that acts very, very much like it. So what do you say we talk about Some the products, products themselves? Okay. Okay. I'll just grab one. Okay. Um, this is called Aviozole, and it's 25%. And in talking about um, uh, aviozole, which is ronidazole, if you look at the uh, contents, it's ronidazole 25%. Uh, and we also have ronidazole 10%. So they're the same product. One is 10 and one is 25. The 25, uh, I, I don't know whether we're, the company is proud of this or not, but 25% ronidazole is on the market because of FOIs. We talked to Dr. Botha, who produces it, and, and he and I had been talking about the fact that ronidazole 10% has lost some of its effectiveness because birds have been on it for decades. Um, and you actually have to double the dosage in a lot of cases. What are you laughing at? Sauerkraut. Sauerkraut. <laughs> Did somebody have to read? <laughs> I opened you myself up to that. I did not. <laughs> you keep it up. Anyways, um, what was I talking about before you were so rude? 25%. Okay. The reason there's 25% <laughs> is we asked Dr. Bolson uh, oh. to make it for us. And I know now other companies have done it. But the 25% is two and a half times stronger because so many birds have developed a resistance to 10%, although it's still popular. If you have a history of canker, if you want to use ronidazole, it's two and a half times stronger. So it's going to be much, much more effective. Um, as I said, ronidazole has been around uh, for forever, still a popular product. Uh, but now, because of the, the fact that a lot of the pigeons have developed resistance, uh, they've come up with some other products are just as effective and something that you should consider rotating them. This one is, well, here again, I don't know, but I think it's an exclusive yeah, to Foy's. So. I've never seen it advertised by anybody else, but maybe they called it something else. This uh, uh, is a combination drug. Yes, it has um, ronidazole in it. Can you pronounce that word? Secnetazole. Say that louder. Secnetazole. Secnetazole. Sec, sec, sec. SCC. Yeah, can you train again? Oh. Boop, boop. <laughs> but it's a combination. It's only got 5% ronidazole, but it's combined with 15% of sucnitazole. And uh, the two common, two drugs combined are much more effective as if you lose one and then the other combined, they become more effective. Um, so it's for this is a, a important it's for prevention of hyper resistant canker which is crop canker in the throat so if they're highly resistant or you're not getting the results 
from treating with canker with ronidazole. This is highly resistant. It's called nidazole. So there's one that you should consider when you're rotating. This is one, uh, metronidazole. Once again, been around for a long time, but this one is in the same family of drugs, ending in Z-O-L-E, but it's 20% metronidazole and uh, very effective. Uh, it's a five-day treatment, goes into drinking water, one teaspoon to a gallon. Um, so remember we're talking about rotating. So when you order one, uh, if you're ordering one, you might want to order two different ones so that uh, in the very near future, you can rotate. When I say rotate, it, let's say you give it to them uh, how long, today, a month from today or, or two months from today, you go to the second one. Uh, like I say, it depends on your own per particular circumstances. I had the first case of canker in my loft for I can't, 10 years at least, and uh, I treated it and it, it was gone within a few days. Uh, but my birds have not been treated for a long time, so the drug I used was very, very effective, and I used uh, Aviotrick, which is a tablet. So, okay. go ahead. This was also known as Flagyl. A lot of you may have recognized yeah, it that's, as that. That's a good point. When I was younger, when we sold it, we sold it as Flagyl. F-L-Y. F-L-A-G-Y. Just yeah. testing it. Can I use that word in... in uh, Scrabble? Scrabble. Sure. <laughs> You still don't know how to spell it. <laughs> F-L. Look it up. Okay. You, you can't. You have your dictionary sitting beside you all the time. Well, I know, but. Ask Siri on your phone. Okay. Well, I can't. On my phone? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, this is tablet form. Um, most pro people love the um, uh, uh, product that you put in the drinking water. But I, as I was talking to a lady today, and uh, in talking about the canker, she only had one bird that was affected with a disease, one out of all of her birds. So I said, well, why treat the whole flock when the whole flock may not have a problem at all? It wasn't canker in this particular case. So I told her, segregate the bird. Whenever you have a bird that's sick in your flock, get it to flock out of there. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> I'm proud uh, of you the for devil that. made me do that one. <laughs> but anyway, get it out of the flock. Best thing you can do this time of the year or when it's cold, put it in the basement or put it in your house if you can in a cave. Just the warmth will help the bird a lot. Uh, and then treat it individually. And the directions are on this particular one. It is, it tells me, one tablet per pigeon for two days. That's all it takes one tablet per pigeon. So there's a hundred in here. But I guess the thing that's so very important, get a sick bird, get the flock out of there. It's not funny the second time, really, but I like that one. All right. Wayne, now, Wayne said he challenges your word. <laughs> all right. Last one, not the last one, next to the last one. No. You know what's not here? Uh -uh. Oh, there it is right here. Um, I'm sorry. Dimetrol. Dimetrol. This is the old, um, what do we call it? Oh, I forget it now. But it's a drug that's been around forever and ever. It's one heap scoop. We don't put the scoops in them anymore, right? Uh, that one has a scoop. Okay, one heap scoop um, in a little over a gallon of drinking water for three days. Once again, Emtrol. That's what I was trying to think. Mm -hmm. It used to be called Emtrol. This is Emtrol. Uh, one of the products you may want to consider rotating. Uh, and I'm saying rotating, uh, it doesn't have to be rotating once and then the next time. You can rotate it four times in a year or rotate it three times in a year. The more you rotate to a different product, different drug, uh, the more effective that drug is going to be. Now, Dr. Pigeon, and if you remember Dr. Pigeon, is a good friend of ours. And this was his product, one of his many products that he came up with. I spoke to him about him before. He's a genius. Um, but Dr. Pigeon came up with this. It's a cure and a preventive. It's one of the few liquid products for canker. Goes into drinking water. It's one teaspoon per gallon of water for three days as a cure. 
one day every week for seven days as, I'm sorry, the first one is as a, three days as a cure, one day per week as a preventative, and it's one teaspoon. That'll go an awful long way. Um, and if you type in on the website, if you type in um, canker, all the canker products will come up. Then you can just look at them all. And if you haven't looked at our website recently, it, it's oh, all updated, website. and a new catalog will be up there shortly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Hold on. I want to mention some of the things that people comment. Go ahead. On here. Interrupt. Um, dementia, Parkinson's, <laughs> cholesterol, sauerkraut, <laughs> arthritis, anxiety disorder. Well, I will tell you that one of the ones that she just mentioned is my issue. So you heard the issues that she just mentioned. And you can probably tell by the way I said it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But yes, she's right. It's one of somebody did guess it. Congratulations. Roberta, you guessed it right. Anxiety. But I can guarantee I don't have sour crop. Unless <laughs> unless in the early in the morning when I get up and you smell my breath, you'd swear I had sour crop. <laughs> All right. Pigeon Vitality. This product is once again from overseas. Is it Holland or Netherlands that comes from? Denmark. This comes from Denmark. It's an all natural canker treatment. Uh, and it's uh, so if, you look, if you're the person who believes in and wants to try a natural way to do things, it comes in powder and it comes in capsule form. With the capsule form, it's one, one pill or one capsule one time will take care of 99 percent of your canker problems and the powder of course goes into drinking water made on the by feed. Powder goes on, on the feed. feed i'm sorry it goes on the feed so you should uh moisten the feed with something like a vegetable oil we sell one uh two or three different oils uh, that are used specifically for that what's dr both is uh, feather and immune oil i like the feather immune oil on the feed and then sprinkle the uh, uh, tricoli stop uh, on the moisture feed. The oil also helps to build an immune system, too. Nobody's mentioned my hat. I was going to ask you about it. I didn't know if you had mentioned it in the pre show. You, you're not even answering hat. my comment that nobody mentioned my hat. I was just talking about your hat. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I don't know. No, you look good enough. I don't have, I don't well, like to wear hats. Look good enough. Okay. She didn't even look. She said, yeah, and didn't even look at me. <laughs> Steady looking down. But I like that hat on you. It looks well, nice. Thank you. Go ahead. You were going so, to mention something I was before saying, I so rudely interrupted? Imagine that. Um, you Did you mention it on the pre-show? I wasn't in here for the whole thing, so I didn't well, know. Well, should have been here. You might well, have learned something. I was working. So what's up with your hat? Pardon? What's up with your hat? Well, I promised the people I'd be wearing a costume for future shows, and I don't know whether I told them or not, but there are two places downtown Beaver Falls where you can get old clothing, and because of what's going on in the world, both of those places are closed. So I did wear a hat to at least let them know I didn't forget. My promise. You were going to mention something? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Um, that's the string from the hat, Vicky. It's supposed to be tied, but it's not tied. Vicky said, "Nice string hanging." <laughs> Vicky said, "My string is hanging." This, but it was tied and mm -hmm. it hangs down, and there's something missing off of it. But, oh, okay. you know. that's why I bought it so cheap. <laughs> um, Lisa said, "Awesome hat." Thank you, thank you. So we. There was another product that can treat canker. It treats several things, which is the Tony's Treasure Tablets. Yeah. That's also for canker, which we didn't talk and about. And the good thing about Tony's Treasure Tablets are that it treats both, if you're not sure whether you have canker or coccidiosis, doesn't Tony's Treasure also go after canker? Uh, yes, it, treats it does canker. canker. So yeah. if you're not sure, Tony's Treasure Tablets, we don't have it in powdered form, but Tony's Treasure Tablets mm -hmm. treats canker and sinusitis, um, which is sometimes confused uh, and think they have canker. 
Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you folks a sneak preview of what the catalog looks like. It's not the pages, but now this is in black and white. I don't know how it's been said, but, but you can see it. But that's going to be the cover of our new catalog in all color, you know, all kinds of breeze. And thanks to Gary Romig, he's the gentleman who came up with all of this. So I think we're going to enjoy the new cover for our next catalog. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about the release stuff, the white bird stuff. Or we are. We talk some, okay. You want um, to talk about something else? I was just going to say, if you have any questions, feel free to ask us. We'll answer them live on the show. No matter, well, any pigeon questions you want to ask, it doesn't have to be what we're talking about. And so. uh, chicken questions. Uh, chicken. Tractor Supply, which is in our area, um, recommends when people have a health issue with their chickens, uh, turkeys. Uh, they tell the people to call me. I got a call two days ago from a woman, a local lady. I saw the full one too. And I said, ma'am, how did you happen to hear about us? And she said, I was at Tractor Supply buying some baby chicks and uh, uh, had a question and wanted to call you. So yeah, thank I you took to the phone call here and I was like, oh, stop right there. I'll send you to Jerry because <laughs> I didn't have a clue. So yeah, yeah, they, they often recommend mm -hmm. us. And we, we thank them. Well, and it's not a pat on the back to foins, but we have um, veterinarians who refer pigeon customers to us. And I've actually had a veterinarian call me and ask for my thoughts on a particular case. Pat me on the back, will you, please? Thank you. Good job. Okay. We um, wrote this, but you know how long, long ago we wrote this book? We you. talked about this before. I'm yeah. just amazed. I, I tell people, I can't remember. Yeah, I tell people, I wrote a catalog a couple of years ago. I wrote the second printing. The oh, original one was written in 2005. Oh, wow. And we actually had to print a second one, which is always a, a sign that the book is uh, is popular. So um, we've written, uh, printed it twice. It's called White Pigeons, Color of Money. And I tell everybody, if the name hadn't have been used, I would have titled it Pigeons for Dummies. Because I went right to the very basic with the assumption that the person reading this book knows nothing or very, very little about pigeons. Uh, and the white pigeons, the color of money, is referencing the fact that the people who are doing the dove release business for weddings and funerals and special occasions are buying these white pigeons. By the way, I bet you I go through a thousand white racing homers a year. It's getting so popular. Um, and we raise, we sell breeders and we sell baby white racing homers. Breeders this time of the year are a little harder to get because we're in breeding season. But if you're looking for white racing homer breeders, I can put you on the list. I don't have them today, so to speak. But if you're looking for white young ones, the difference being, if you're not aware, young ones, babies uh, at about four to six weeks old um, are weaned. And wherever they are released from the very first time, from your, if you buy them from me and they go to your lofts and you follow the steps, uh, they're always going to call your home their home. If it's a breeding pair, generally speaking, you tell people don't let a breeding pair out. There's a good chance they won't come home because they've never been out before and they're so strong of wing and they just take off uh, and never to be seen again in many, many cases. So uh, give you an idea, uh, if you're thinking about the, getting into the business and I, whenever I talk to somebody, through the conversation, I can really tell that they're all new to pigeons. And I'll say, you know, sir, or lady, a lot of ladies are in this business. Um, if I can make one recommendation, recommendation, don't buy a bird from me yet. Get this book. Read it. It tells you a lot about pigeons and the things you have to do. Uh, it also talks about the pigeons' lofts. If you're going to build a loft, um, if you read this book, you'll save yourself money and time. You won't make some of the mistakes that a uh, person might. Uh, and believe me, it happens all the time. They got their loft built, but then they maybe they put in nine-foot ceilings, which is a no-no. There's a lot of things with this book 
And if you don't have white pigeons or not planning on getting white pigeons, it, this will still answer so many questions if in fact you are a beginner. So if, it's a great book. That's part of what we wanted to talk about. And, and Jerry white wrote it. Statement. Pardon? And you wrote it. And I, oh, yeah, I wrote it. Uh, uh, I've written two books. Two or three. Two. Long, working on two. my third. Yeah, that's right. And we, you and I have also edited um, Facts and Secrets, Lofts for Racing Homers, the ones by, what's his mm -hmm. name? Swanson's books. We, we own the rights to them. And yeah. you and I worked mm -hmm. on them, most books. Yeah. And you'll notice I forgot to put your name in there as the person who was redoing the book. Okay. I should, maybe in the next catalog, if you it's remind okay. me. I even put your name first, <laughs> Gina and Jerry. It's OK. okay. Gina Gagne? Gina Gagne. Gagne. I want to talk okay. to Kim about that, too. When I call you and I get the recording, you know, hi, this is Gina Gagne. <laughs> when I call Kim, hi, this is Kim Hare. Do you know, and I have mentioned it to her. Do you, do you know why mine says Gina Gagne? Because that's your real name. Because you yelled at me about it. <laughs> okay. okay. Well, it is your real legal name, isn't it? I'm hyphenated. Hyphenated. Yeah. But anyways, yes, is that it like is. Ventilated? No. Oh, okay. So I did want. I was thinking about something while you was talking um, about new people. It's also for old people. But um, custom products. We do custom products, whether it's um, purchase or traps or whatever wood all products, the wood like products can nest be bowl, customized nest boxes not nest, not nest, nest, nest boxes nest fronts all that all that wood stuff feeders so and we do a lot of custom products um sometimes it even turns into something that we put in our catalog with your permission but um i will say when you call to request a custom product you have to know the exact dimensions because i don't know what your lot looks like I, if you tell me the dimension, what size your window is, I don't know. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I need exact dimensions if you're going to call and request a custom product. Because if it's wrong, then that's on you, not me. Mm -hmm. I can't. Well, the word custom implies right. that it's made for you to mm -hmm. your specifications. And we write them down and she usually reads them back to you. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you say yes. Don't they have to pay for them up front? Yes. Yeah, you have to pay up front. Mm -hmm. Now, if it's a small error, we'll try to we'll do our best. But um, custom means custom, uh, and it, it, you mentioned it's growing. It's amazing mm -hmm. to me. Uh, we're always uh, uh, contacting John, and he makes things to our uh, specifications, mm -hmm. which are yours. And in some cases, he'll call you himself. Mm -hmm. Um, and go over to make sure everything is right. So if you need something made for you and you alone, we'll make it for you. Um, and uh, you can be sure it'll be really, really uh, top quality. John's a, just a, amazing. A, yeah, just an amazing yeah, number. In fact, in our catalog, there's one or two different products that he, one of them is Simpson's uh, feeder stand, a feeder drinker stand. What about it? Uh, that's in the new catalog, isn't oh, it? Oh, yeah. And that was. Uh, built by John, it's custom. Okay. And that was a product from Ron Simpson. Yep. Ron um, Simpson, we stole the idea from him with his permission. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, if you need any custom wood products, just give Gina a call <laughs> yeah. and we'll take care of it. Before we go to the question, I was going to uh, mention the fact that I got a call yesterday. No, an email yesterday mm -hmm. wanting utility kings. Um, I don't sell utility kings, but I have access to them. I have a friend who breeds them. So if you need some breed that you can't find, uh, if I can get it for you, I'll have it delivered right to my door and we'll ship it to you. Or if I don't have access to the breed, I'll find, in most cases, find somebody and give you their phone number uh, and you can call them. So if you're looking for something different, if you can't find, give old Jerry a call. We do get a lot of calls for um, pigeons that you don't mm -hmm. sell. Um, yeah. So Ken has a question. In a clutch of homing babies, one is so aggressive about being fed, it is outgrowing the other. Any suggestions on how to get the small one caught up? 
Uh, no, there's not much you can do with that, but it's not unusual. Uh, and in all, almost all cases, when you have two eggs hatching in a nest within a day of each other, you've got to that's distracting. What's going on out there? Yeah, I know. Somebody's having fun out there. We can hear it. Like, who's that? <laughs> but uh, you always have one that's bigger than the other. And it's very, very, very rare for both of them not to survive. So it's not unusual. Uh, if you really wanted to do something, um, well, I'm stumped. I don't know what else you could do. I was going to I was going to suggest put the parents in a cage with, with the smaller young one. But then that isn't going to work. Uh, and I don't think, um, Ken, I don't think it's going to be a problem. I don't think you'll have a problem uh, at that. One bird is just one or two days older than the other. And at that stage in our life, it makes a big, big difference. But uh, what you'll see a lot of times is, um, I was noticing yesterday in my law, even a pair of pigeons that being uh, are being pestered by a baby that needs to be fed or wants to be fed, even though they're not the parents, many times, they'll feed that baby, um, even though it's not there. So um, I, I don't think you have a big issue there. Okay. And it'll, it'll get caught. He's asking, will they get caught up? And yes, they will. Okay. Russ, hi, Russ. Russ asked, um, hey, Jerry, have rollers there on first round of babies and last night lost two babies. Think it was too cold or hens not laying on them at night. Have young breeders think because it's first time having young? Yes, I didn't read the back the last part of it, but in many cases, and we've talked about this on the show before, if you have um, eggs or young in a nest that were laid or being brought up by a let's say a pair from last year, 2019, they haven't less let learned the process yet, even though you would think they would. Uh, so a lot of times you'll lose around one egg or two eggs won't hatch because the parents haven't learned to set tighter. And usually by the second time, um, they do know how to do it. Uh, so I think that really is your problem. So with the cold weather overnight, like with us, a couple of nights ago, we were down in the 20s. If that's a young breeding pair and it's that cold out there, that breeding pair being so young themselves, because pigeons start breeding it around six months of age, um, so um, they may just not have set on them and taken care of them as well as an older pair may. Jerry mentioned how cold it was the other day. We had snow, what, two days this week? Yep. Crazy. Well, I was talking to Fred Tolke, my friend up in North Dakota. Mm -hmm. Last week they got one snowstorm at five inches and they were expecting three more inches overnight. Yes. Doesn't that make you feel a lot better? Yes, it does. Um, <laughs> Hi, Christian Lynn Moss. Christina. Christina. Oh, hi, Christina. Okay, Christina. I started White Doves 10 years ago with one of my original breeding pairs coming from you guys. Have been getting my products from y'all ever since then. Just want to say thank you for being awesome. Isn't that nice? Thank you, Christina. Oh, we appreciate that. Um, Ryan, do I need... I think she was speaking directly to me. She was. No. <laughs> hi, Ryan. Ryan asked, do I need to give additional supplements like vitamins and calcium for young birds, not yet weaned three weeks old? No. Well, that being said, you can if you like, um, but uh, when they're three weeks old, they're getting all the nutrition they need from their parents. Now, if you do put uh, supplements in the water, the parents will give them to them. Um, and in most cases, I think in all cases, if they're true vitamins are meant for pigeons, no issue at, at all. What are the breeds you want to start, huh? Homers and rollers. Homer? What, what breeds do I sell? Homers and rollers. Homers. Racing homers, which are what we call race quality. These are birds raised for people who want to fly competitively in a club. I sell colored homers, which are raised because they're really pretty looking birds. The yellows, the blacks, the splashes, the grizzles, and colors I've never seen before, so to speak. Um, so we sell colored homers. I, I sell a lot of those, but they're not raised for racing. They're raised because they're pretty. 
Sure, they're racing homers. Yes, they can be trained to fly 100 miles or so, but uh, a bird that is of race quality will beat the heck out of them in, in a race because the, those race quality birds have built up the muscle structure and everything else needed to fly fast, been trained to fly fast, where a colored homer has not. Uh, I sell rollers, um, and the rollers are from a roller man who that's all he raises is top quality rollers. So if you need rollers, uh, I have luck. That being said, just a few minutes ago, we were talking about it. If one of the people who supply me with birds, because well, I can't raise them all, although I've got eggs and young all over the place right now, I can't raise the demand that we have. I can't raise enough for the demand. So a lot of these people have uh, different breeds. And if, if I know they have them, I'll get them for you. Uh, Bill raises, um, uh, for instance, uh, uh, Hubble's, H-U-B-B-L-E. Uh, Hubble is, uh, you can't tell the difference between the two, uh, between a utility king and a Hubble, they look exactly the same and they say serve the same purpose. And, and there are others that have different breeds. And if I can find them, uh, I'll either get them from my sources or I'll give you a phone number and you can call and uh, maybe work out a deal with them. Uh, if you're looking for high flyers, like the Danzig high flyer or the Serbian high flyer uh, or tipplers, um, I don't sell them, but I have access to them. This is for us to talk about, I'm assuming, young lady. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. That's Not fine. personal, I hope. No. What's it say? Oh, it's a picture of me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is a um, event release basket. Uh, yeah, event event release basket wedding or a ceremony uh, requiring not a whole lot of birds or maybe a whole lot of birds, but this would be a, uh, an accompaniment to that. And what this is 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 to signify the Holy Trinity, the three. So what we do here is if you're going to fly three birds at a funeral or a special event, and I'm going to stand up, this <coughs> she will show you. What you do is one bird here, one bird here, one bird here. And oh, that's one on top. Yep. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm looking down. There's one bird here. You put the bird in the direction it's going to be released, which is so you put them in with their head in this way, one bird. And then you put three birds here. And what happens is when you want to release them, Gina, I think you could help. No. I didn't do that, folks. But is it, can I see it okay now? So what you do is now the bird's here. There's one here. There's two here in the face. And that way, you turn this around. Go ahead, Gina. Show them how that works. So you, that, that's the first thing you do, and the birds, the three birds come out, and they will go up, and the three birds will start to circle. When they start to circle, then you let the one bird out. This signifies um, the deceased person in some cases. In some cases, it's the married couple, and this is uh, the bird going up. And those three birds are flying around. This single bird will go up and join them, and within a matter of minutes, they're gone. So it's a very unique uh, item. I don't think anybody else has ever come up with the idea nor sells them. Uh, Foy's has them, and we've talked about John Raber. Um, it's not made cheaply. It's heavy. Uh, it's screwed. It's not nailed. It's not riveted. Everything is screwed. You can buy it white or you can buy it black for a funeral. So it's a really nice item, very, very well done. Yeah. And uh, it's, it, we, we sell a fair number of them. And we also have one, we didn't want to include that today, but we also have a remote release where you have your birds in, you push the button and the door drops okay. down and the birds take off. Okay. Yeah, the remote release that comes in um, two sizes and it also comes in black and white, black or white. We have an auction uh, in two weeks. Um, uh, and I want to talk a little bit about, do I have the time or do you have something? Go ahead. Oh, we'll talk about the Legacy Fund Trust. Um, I have birds sent to me from all over the United States, some really good birds. Uh, I'm running out of birds. They're not all mine, certainly. They're donated, but I'm running out of donated birds. So I'm appealing 
to a lot of the National Pigeon Association members, trustees of the Legacy Fund Trust, and you. Um, if you would like to donate a pair or two, and pairs meaning a hen and a cock, good health, good quality, and banded, uh, if you would like to donate them, um, I'd love to talk to you. You can call me at home, uh, and uh, I'll kind of give you the information. But if then if you send me a pair of birds, if we sell them, and let's say we sell them for $100 or more, your name will go into National Pigeon Association Honor Roll. It will be there forever as a backer of the future of the hobby, as a contributor towards that future. Um, and uh, as I said, you would get credit. Um, your name will appear in that magazine at least twice a year uh, forever. Uh, if you uh, have a question, my phone number at home is 724-84, no, 724-359-5355. I'm so proud of myself for remembering that because um, with my six kids, uh, I'm always getting their names wrong. Too. Eight. One passed away. But you still have eight kids. You said six. Oh. You have eight. See what I mean? <laughs> so, well, I was going to tell you about a dream I had grands? last night, but I won't do that. How many grandkids? <laughs> it has to do with a two tub. Uh, I have 27 or 28 great grandchildren, a group grand grand grandchildren, and 15, seven, I think closer to 17 great, great grandchildren. And I'm hoping I'm around to see a great, great child born. Oh, wow. I can think I can make it too. At I least I'm, I'm encouraging my children. You can. So don't worry about condoms. Just have kids. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, did I tell you Malik uh, visited me last night or yesterday? Yes, you did. Malik is her son, handsome baby. man, six foot four, six, six foot five. five. Yeah, it's a handsome kid. Thank so you. is Dom. They take oh, I was going to tell you. I was, Driving right past your house a little while ago. Uh -huh. And guess who's standing on the front porch? Who? Cassandra. Yeah. And even though I was in a nice. big rush to get somewhere, I stopped, ran over there. And I know you don't want her to do this, but she was standing there. And I said, Hey, Cassandra, can I give you a big hug? And she says, Of course you can. <sighs> He's not supposed to be hugging anybody right now. And she didn't have a mask on, nor did um, I. I believe it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they I, don't listen. Vicky and Fred. Um, Vicky, yeah, with the box you release the bottom. The first. bottom first. Yeah. I had to think about it. They yeah. go up and form the circle, and then the last bird goes up and uh, joins the three of them. Correct. Um, what nationality is your last name, Vicky? W or well, I won't give out the whole name, but what nationality are you? Vicky's a good customer of ours, and, and she calls me a lot. I think there might be something there. I'm not so sure. <laughs> she calls sometimes just to talk to me. Imagine that. Oh, Fred's not home. He is. <laughs> Who is he? He's sitting right there with her. <laughs> well, she was so proud. She sends me emails and shows me pictures of the eggs and then the eggs uh -huh. hatching and then the, the babies uh -huh. hatching and well, nice. she's become a good friend. Yep. All right. Uh, well, if Polish. You That's what I was going to guess. Polish. Polish. Okay. Can you pronounce that last name? Wachowicz. Wachowicz. I'm going to try it. I'm going to say. Uh, go ahead. Wachowicz. Wachowicz. <laughs> Something well, like that. Vicky created her own problem because her maiden name is Fulmer. And she marries Fred and probably caused problems all her life <laughs> in school. Can you see Vicky, Vicky? No, not would have been in school. Vicky would have been Vicky Fulmer. Oh <laughs> now she goes to the doctor's office and she's married and so forth. Vicky, what's a what 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 show wits? Victoria. <laughs> Sorry, you don't mind a slap over here. Like Vicky. I say, you know who you are. You know what I mean. <laughs> if you got a question, my home phone number, you give me a call anytime. 
if you need pigeons um, or, ha or don't need pigeons, uh, but have a question, that's what I do all the time. I will say this, um, if you have a question, my time is nine to five. Appreciate it time. Appreciate it if you call me between those hours. I got a call last night at 9.30 mm -hmm. uh, and I didn't answer, but it was ringing and ringing and ringing at 9.30. So the next morning, and I know this lady doesn't watch the show, but guess what her question was? Jerry, she says, I bought some bands from you last year and I've got some left over. What do I do with them? I said, well, what do you mean? What do you do with the leftover bands? She said, what do I do with them? I says, throw them away. She says, yeah, but they're, if they're in the trash and somebody sees one, they'll be able to track it back to me. And then I said, I don't think that's going to happen. She says, well, can I mail them back to you? But I don't want them and I don't want to throw them away. Take a hammer. Yes, so, you know, I had a question one time. Uh, what was the, I, it was the historically oddish question, I, I would think. Uh, oh, golly. How much is your free catalog? Yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, somebody, uh, hello, yeah, yeah, uh, I wanted to know how much is your free catalog? <laughs> <laughs> that had to be 15 years ago, but that's, I will never ever forget that. <laughs> how much is your free catalog? Wow. Um, Arthur, if you're watching again, yes, we did mention this is $16 um, if you want to get it. And we should, probably should mention the fact that uh, I noticed that the Baltimore, what's the name of that football team in Baltimore? Ravens. <laughs> well, they should be called the Baltimore Dogs. <laughs> I was looking at, uh, uh, they don't have a history of good, um, what, are they, what is on television right now with their, the draft. We draft we're going to draft somebody tonight and uh, uh, I, I would think Baltimore probably should take a course uh, and I'm willing to drive to Baltimore and teach you something about good football because certainly Baltimore has its problems. I just wanted to throw that in. We haven't heard from him in a while. We haven't heard from, well, no, Manny last week contacted us. Didn't yeah, he, he no? did. He used to be a regular. I guess he doesn't watch anymore. Maybe he's busy working or with his pigeons or something. We are open for visitation. I mentioned this through this uh, uh, pandemic. Perfect. When I say is we're open in that if you have a need for something and you live close by or within driving distance, all you have to do is call the office, place your order. Uh, they'll take your credit card information. When you get to our store, you call us on, a, on your cell phone and we'll be inside. You tell us you're there. We'll walk outside put the products in your back seat or in the back of your truck. No, huh? no. it'll be sitting at the end of the garage. It'll be sitting there with your name on it. Okay, yes. so you can get products from yes, us. Yes, you can, but you cannot come inside. That's right. Um, Sam said, thank you guys about all help you did for me last week. Love you all. You're welcome. I hope your pigeons are doing well also. And then um, Arthur, no, it won't ship today. It's too late. Everybody already picked up, but it can ship Monday if you'd like. You're reading a question that's not even up there. I, you can't see it. It's that um, invisible ink. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we've been doing this show, Gina. I think we're into our probably into our third year. Um, Close to it. Close, maybe. You know, it's been a long time. We appreciate it, and keep in mind uh, that. Um, the show is nothing without you. We need the questions. Um, and uh, so many people were afraid to ask for questions, but just send them in uh, to us. You can uh, email them to me at 724, no, at Jerry, Jerry at foispetsupplies.com. Send them to Foy. 
we do read your question. I will contact you personally, but then I also will save the question and we'll put it on our show uh, to share it with other people because you know, if you have an issue, uh, they may have an issue as well. And I was talking a little bit about the Legacy Fund Trust. I did mention, I want to mention that uh, if you want to send us a check, we'd love to do that. We just make it out to LFT, Legacy Fund Trust, and you mail it to FOIs and they'll give it to me and you'll get credit for that too. I was adding up some numbers. I've been chairman of it for about five years now. And I called the fellow who started it, a good friend of mine, Fred Tolke. I said, Fred, take a wild guess. We always uh, always getting in small donations, sometimes $5, sometimes $10. Over the last five years, how much money have we raised uh, if I added up all donations under a hundred dollars, how much would you think? Mm. He would. He guessed five hundred. Oh. Dollars in small contributions. Oh, in small. In five years. I don't. I don't know. Four thousand dollars. So a lot of you know people don't think if they send if they they think if they send us a small amount, well, it, it doesn't make a difference. But in five years, we've raised over four thousand dollars in. The smallest contribution was three dollars and thirty-three cents. There's a reason for that, but five dollars, ten dollars is not unusual. So if you have a contribution, it's sort of like saying, "Hey, Jerry, we enjoy the show. Well, let's help the future of the hobby." Uh, so if if you have a question, seven two four three five nine five three five five. I think we should ignore that last question from Wayne up there. No, I think we should read it. Okay. Just so all of our Baltimore Raven fans mm -hmm. can hear it in case they can't see it. You can use that <laughs> stiller yellow towel to wipe the tears when they play the Ravens. <laughs> well, talking about towels and the yellow towel and so forth, that whole thing, the scenario of the towel, Terrible towel. Mm -hmm. all started Right here in Pittsburgh, one of our broadcasters, a famous broadcaster, is no longer with Myron us. Myron Cope. Brian, yep. Yeah. Um, Myron Cope. He mm -hmm. came up with the idea, and now every stadium in the United States uses the towels. And I think the Ravens have probably used that tear towel after they played our game a hell of a lot more <laughs> than the Ravens. Then we had to use it for tears yep. against. The low, the, the Ravens had one good year last year, and all they want to do is brag, brag, brag. <laughs> and we lost last year because we were using third string quarterback, and we still managed to win 10 games. Hmm. So long for a while. So next show is Friday, May 8th, but do you know what else is in May? Your birthday? No, no. not mine. One of my siblings. Okay. Siblings? Yes. Your brother? No. Your sister? One of them. Rhonda? Nope. I don't know who it would be then. So Kim's birthday is May 4th, if you want to call and wish her a happy birthday. Her 30th birthday. Okay. So we will be back on May 8th. Um, until then, if you, have, if you want us to show anything, um, just contact Jerry or myself. If you want to send birds, contact Foy's. That too. And next week, unless something goes wrong, one pair of parlor tumblers. Yes. And something we've never done before, and I haven't discussed it with Veronica, but we're going to let outside. We're going to go outside, and I'm going to release a parlor tumbler so you can see what a parlor tumbler oh. does. Okay. It'll be first, a first for us. Because a lot of people think parlor tumblers are meant for the parlor and they roll over and over and over. Those are parlor rollers. Oh. A parlor tumbler, when you release it, it doesn't go any more than three or four feet. And it goes straight up in the air, drops down, rolls twice, sometimes three times, that's rare. Rolls twice and that's what a parlor tumbler does. And we're gonna have American fantails. And I would venture to say we'll probably have a real nice pair of racing ones. So that'll be on May 8th. So we'll see you then. Have a great weekend. Thanks for putting up with...